In the sunken stronghold, the Dominion have been experimenting with ancient relics in an attempt to twist their minions into powerful abominations. Enter the stronghold with your fellow freelancers to put an end to the Dominion's deadly plans. So, patch 1.1.0 has officially landed and is ready for everyone to dive into the world of Anthem and try out the new content. The new features for this patch are the Sunken Cell Stronghold, which is now available to all players who have completed the main story, the Critical Path. They've added the ability to select contracts from the start of Expedition screen, rather than going to the individual contracts boards in Fort Tarsus or in the launch bay. This is a really nice quality of life change and one that actually bugged me a lot previously because I had to run around or go to the launch bay to pick them up all at the same time, but then that required an extra loading screen, right? Why not be able to do it from the expedition screen? Well, now you can. They've added the ability to launch a new mission from the end of expedition screen without having to return to Fort Tarsus or the launch bay. Again, another fantastic addition. Finally, they've added the ability to access the forge during missions, strongholds, and free play. You can now change the gear without having to return to Fort Tarsus or the launch bay. This is a fantastic addition and one that will pretty much change a lot of things for many people. It no longer means that you can only go out with one loadout. You can change your loadout on the fly as long as I assume you're not in combat. This is pretty damn awesome and I thank you and I love you for it by the way. Right, next we move on to the general notes. They have three new Universal Master War components. Extended Sniper Magazine adds specialised storage for enhanced sniper rifle ammunition. Increases damage by 30% of base damage. Increases maximum magazine size of sniper rifles by a large amount. Hopefully we'll see that large amount on the actual masterwork itself, because obviously no one really knows what that is. Rapid Hollow Points adds specialised ammo storage for machine pistols and auto cannons. Increases damage by 30%. Increases weak point damage of machine pistols and auto cannons. Another nice one. Hopefully the armor for this will actually work for it, because if it doesn't, if you're going into GM 2 and 3, you're going to go down quite quickly. You do need armor. So hopefully we can actually weave these into our builds. Extended Special Arms Magazine. Adds specialized ammo storage for heavy pistols and grenade launchers. Increases damage by 30%. Increases maximum magazine size of heavy pistols and grenade launchers by a large amount. Grenade launchers don't have much magazine size, so this will definitely be useful. They've added a primer detonator icon in the cortex next to gear entries. Fixed a bug where legendary freelancer javelin challenge objectives weren't completing correctly in the challenge journal. They've resolved an issue where players were being kicked back to Fort Tartus when loading into quick play missions. The PlayStation 4 trophy now unlocks when Arcanist Loyalty 3 is hit. They fixed an issue for notification challenges not appearing correctly. They've resolved an issue where after respawning you could be downed again prior to reloading back in fully, which was highly annoying, especially in GM2. And best of all, they've added STT, speech to text and TTS, text to speech on all platforms, that be console and PC. Good job, Bioware. Good job. Now, here comes the gameplay adjustments. Retaliation of Garatus, Trajection Machine Pistol, increased bonus from 200% to 400%. A hefty increase to that. Rolling Carnage Vengeance Shotgun increased bonus from 50% stacking 3 times to 83.33% stacking 3 times. Why not just make an 84%? It's a weird one, but ultimately you do get that one extra percent when you stack it 3 times, right? So, last turn, Mauler Auto Cannon. Increased bonus from 200 to 225%, so a small increase there. Fist of Stral Cloud Burst Auto Cannon increased bonus from 10% stacking to 10 times to 16% stacking 10 times. Again, a 60% increase there. Unending Battle Fulcrum Machine Pistol increased bonus from 110% to 135%. Death From Above Guardian Marksman Rifle increased bonus from 65% to 235%. So this is gonna be something I'm gonna go and try out once I finish this video. Wyvern Blitz is another one that I like. Dead Eye Sniper Rifle increased bonus from 40% to 185%. That is a whopping 450% increase. That's pretty amazing. So, Masterwork Gear, Colossus, Final Judgment, HE Mortar, increased bonus from 35% to 55%. Fist of Crucible Flamethrower, increased the bonus from 12% stacking up to 10 times to 24% stacking up to 10 times. So, it's got a 100% increase. 
Interceptor, Serpent's Veil Venom Bomb, increased bonus from 100 to 202.5%. Again, I don't get these 0.5%, but they're there nonetheless. Ruthless Stalker, Searching Glaive, increased bonus from 60% to 110%. Bitter Harvest, Cluster Mine, increased bonus from 60% to 110%. This is the season of buffs, I guess, where the division is going through the season of nerfs, and we're getting the season of buffs, making us even stronger. I continue. Ranger, Cold-Blooded, Frost Grenade, increased bonus from 235% to 270%. Avengers Boon, Pulse Blast, increased bonus from 210 to 220%. A small increase, but a buff's a buff. Storm, getting some pretty hefty buffs here. Ponder Infinity, Lightning Strike, increased bonus from 60% to 165%. Chaotic Rhyme, Frost Shards, increased bonus from 125% to 250%. We've also got some gear updates. Friendly player projectiles should now be able to pass three javelins in your squad. Finally! I can no longer bloody... Ugh. The amount of times I used my ultimate on Colossus and just as I'm firing my shot, an interceptor just goes... Toasty! Straight across. It was highly annoying. Colossus Firewall Mortar should now more reliably spawn the firewall effect on directly hitting enemies. Sloped surfaces or next to walls. Good stuff. Status effects and combos. Delay between when players and creatures are frozen and when visual effect is applied has been reduced to improve readability of status effect. If a player applies a status effect that already exists on a target but the new status effect has a higher damage than the existing one, the damage will now scale to that higher value. Players who prime targets for combos will now also see the combo text when detonated by another player. And finally, they've increased the damage of the electric status effect when applied to creatures. So it's pretty much a really nice quality of life update. Sadly for the April roadmap, they have only just incorporated the stronghold, which does suck a bit. The stream tonight, I guess, will expand more on when the rest of that content is coming in regards to the 90 day roadmap. May was looking a bit light anyway, so it looks like a lot of stuff will actually make its way into that update. Finally, they have a bunch of bug fixes, which I'm not going to go through because there is a lot here. But Bulwark Point, for example, now properly gets duration increases from utility duration bonus inscriptions. Um, anything else of importance? I'm just going to scan through these. This is an important, this is a really important one. Fix the bug where the Storm's Shield did not get intended 20% damage resistance increase while hovering. Now it does. So the rest of the issues that are basically fixed are general quality of life issues, general bugs and things. Like the Heart of Rage fixed an issue where enemies could be trapped behind a fog wall, prevents the player from progressing. There is a ton and ton of fixes here, um, too much to go through. So I'm going to leave a link in the description below for the actual full patch notes. I have covered the main points here. If you want to read all the fixes that have come with this, then you can go into there and get a more extensive view. But what I've covered here is pretty much the majority of the most important things. Yes, it kind of does suck that we're not getting everything like I said earlier. It does suck that we're not going to see everything. But in a few hours tonight, we're going to be getting a live stream. And there we should be getting a lot more information in regards to the Cataclysm, the Mastery System, the 90 Day Roadmap and everything else that's going to be coming. So for now, you've got new content, you've got new Stronghold. Go out there, try it out. You know, go and enjoy the fact that you can now change your weapons anywhere in the game, not only in Fort Tarsus. It does seem like Anthem is beginning to get back on the right track. They didn't mention anything about loot or loot updates, but as we know from Bioware, they generally tend to do this on the fly and not tell anyone about it. So if you are experiencing better loot drops, let me know in the comment section below. And otherwise, that's pretty much it. If you've enjoyed this quick summary, leave a like, subscribe, Hit that notification bell, don't forget to share, and I'll see you in the next video. I'm going to be off now to play some new Sunken Stronghold, and until the next video, which will probably be later tonight with the release of the stream, I'm going to be recapping that, so busy busy. So until then, remain vigilant.